The Greensboro Coliseum, and we're set for the start of the quarterfinal round of the 43rd ACC tournament. The Maryland Terrapins' Johnny Rhodes had 22 in Durham, 18 against the Devils at College Park. The head coach of Maryland is Gary Williams. He is 0-2 against Duke in ACC tournament play. The Blue Devils at 18 and 11 line up this way. And starting for the injured Chris Collins today will be Steve Wojciechowski from Severna Park, Maryland, played at Cardinal Gibbons. So going up against the Terrapins again here today. And the head coach of the Blue Devils is Mike Krzyzewski. And if he wins today, it will be career win number 450 against the Maryland Terrapins in the ACC tournament. Mike is 3-2. and two. The opening tip to get things started for Greensboro is straight ahead. In January at Durham, the Devils got out to a 20-point lead and finally won the game by 10. The key stat in that one, the Terps shot just 35% from the field and just 52% from the free-throw line. In the second game just last week in College Park, the big shot, of course, Ricky Price canning the three-point shot at the buzzer. And Duke escaped with a two-point win. It was Price's only three-pointer of the game. But as is the case, from high emotions, you're right back into the fray. And Duke and Maryland matching up here, Billy, in this first ACC matchup. Ricky Price has been gangbusters here lately, and Johnny Rhodes set the all-time ACC steals record. Well, one of the things that you have to worry about if you're Mike Krzyzewski is that his team has been depleted with academic defections as well as the injuries. And, of course, Collins uh, really magnifies that problem today. And what I'm going to be anxious to see is now so much pressure can be put on Capel and Price in terms of guys that have got to come up big. There's really not that third score out there on the floor. Where are the points going to come from for Duke? The opening tip goes to Jeff Capel. How about from right in the middle, huh? Don Donzowski. Bad defense by Akizi. That pass was thrown from 35 feet. Didn't have his head turned. Simpkins. And that's a three. The second most accurate three-point shoot in the ACC this year. And here comes full court pressure that has an opportunity to do a lot of things. Obviously, up the tempo of this game. Where Duke down. We know the bench is short. Maryland's got a very good bench. Able missing for the points. Newton is doubled. The fadeaway. Tough shot. And Rhodes rebounds. The kind of shot that if you do miss it, you have no rebounding potential inside. Domzowski against three others. Keith Booth with the travel. Playing without a shot clock last night in the NC State Florida State game. Problems with the shot clock to our left. We're looking at the one to our right. And look at Chris Collins. I have the many suits at the Duke bench today. And I think that that affects Duke more than it does Maryland. Maryland's going to want to push this ball up the floor. Duke later in the ball game is going to want to probably occupy some clock. It's tough when you can't see one. Bryce hitting the ball. Gary Williams just beside himself over there, realizing his guys, hey, there's only two men that are going to come up big with points here. you got to get out on them in every shot. Price wasn't even contested. Booth to Rhodes inside. Shut off by Don Dowski, and Damon takes it away. Young freshman is really starting to come on of late with the minutes that he's getting to play. Got a hand on that one, but Simpkins pulls it out. Too quick a pace for Duke early on. Simpkins to the bucket. Rhodes couldn't get the tip. They shovel it to hip, and X misses a jam. He ended his career at home with a jam up against Florida State the other night. I'm really shocked at Duke wanting to play this type of pace. And a foul on Wojo. Now, Wojo realizing, of course, there's the pass on the inside. X3 goes up. Hits it off the back of the board. And Bob, back to that shot clock. You know, a team that likes to pace the ball a little bit is going to try to play some half-court offense, and it's really important to be able to see that clock right up above the, you know, the backboard. It gets down to that six-second uh, time frame. So that could hurt. Here comes Profit in, the young man who really took over the game against Florida State up at College Park uh, last week on Monday. A game that I think took a lot out of Florida State. Last night, that was a flat team. 
Duke goes zone. Mike Krzyzewski knowing that he can slow down the pace a little bit this way and keep some people out of foul trouble possibly. Another block inside for the Blue Devils. Duke leads it 5-3. Wojciechowski. And he strips a court. And this shows you a little bit here. Here's a young man that normally wouldn't even be looking for the shot. Has taken two quick ones early on. So you know that he's been told from Mike Krzyzewski, hey, you're going to have to put it up and become a scorer today. 8-3, Duke. And Keith Booth misses a game. Second dunk missed by Maryland. In less than 30 seconds. Capel for three. And Domzowski crashing the boards, picks up the foul. They need to straighten out the net down in the Maryland end, but there is no reason. You say, we've got to get good looks. How about those two looks? Three inches from the basket, Maryland misses both. I can't believe the officials have not fixed the net on the other end. You can see it is actually pushed back up inside the rim. Drop it. And a travel. On Laurent gives it right back to Duke. Boy, a very disjointed start for the Terrapins. Three minutes into the game, and the highest scoring team in the league has only scored three points. I'll tell you what, though, they have their legs. You know, one of the things that uh, has to happen sometimes the team comes into a tournament, they practice too hard, you know, to get here, the emotion of a coach. There's never a perfect formula that brings your team into an ACC tournament. Three game stretch, you know, you have to have, but I, I think that Maryland kids have their legs today, as, as Duke. Duke looks very fresh. Well, a lot of tournament talk about the Maryland situation as it applies to the NCAA. Is what's your read on the well, Terrapin situation? I think they've got to win some games here in Greensboro. I really do. Um, one definitely, two maybe. Right now, the Terps are sitting on 16 wins. Started 0 3 in the ACC to Gary Williams Ball Club, and they ended up 8 and 8, winning their final two regular season home games. Profit with the steal. And the quick hands of Ricky Price to take away what Keith Booth was hoping, his first bucket of the game. Profit is so quick on the inside. Price did get right down there with it. Booth has got strong hands, so a good angle by Price. Simpkins with a three-pointer early, the only Maryland bucket. Duke staying in that 2-3 zone. Hip will take a three and hit it. Well, he's straightened out that net. <laughs> That's one way. 8-6. And they stay right in this 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court pressure. And Price drives it right to the hole. Well, we talked with Mike Krzyzewski yesterday, Billy, about the absence of Chris Collins. And Mike was saying just something as hip goes strong. He was saying something as elementary as inbounding the ball against the Maryland press. Usually that's Chris's job to get it in. But today, it is going to rely on Newton and then later when he gets into the game, Stan Brunson. And just a little change like that can really upset oh, the apple. Without question, you have to have a guy that's got the patience to know who to throw the ball to, doesn't feel the pressure. I mean, it sounds rather simple, but, the, you know, the pressure of a shot is one thing. The pressure of a guy that's going to make the pass, the initial entry pass is another. Mike was suggesting that Collins is like a quarterback that can see all the receivers where the guys that will bring it in today might have their eyes fixed on only one receiver. Here has been one of the real question marks of the year in the ACC. X-Ray Hip expected to be one of the premier players in the league. Remember last year at the uh, ACC tournament, he made all tournament second team along with Joe Smith, even though they were eliminated the second day. And then this year has really been a struggle for him. X shooting just 37 percent from the floor this year. He averaged only 7.3 per game. And a two-time honorable mention all ACC leading into his senior year. Long green hustle. But Maryland claims it Simpkins quickly to Keith Booth. He'll drive it and score it. There's that strength I told, talked about at the top of the show. Excellent all-around basketball player. You got to let him have that jump shot early in the ball game. See what happened? Domzowski comes charging out of him, gave Booth exactly what he needed for the first quick step to take him inside. You talked earlier, Billy, about him being undersized for that power forward spot. But we got a tip off his freshman year when they played North Carolina, and Keith Booth said, "I'll guard Eric Montross, coach. I'll get in there and take him on." 
And we've seen that kind of performance night in and night out from Keith. And here we see that press again. Now, Duke is not going over the top. There it is for the first time. That is available. Maryland has that press with four guys actually inside the foul line on the other end. Drop back. Straight man to man. Oh, look at that quick move by Price. That one's deflected. Yeah, Booth pulls it down. I'd say Ricky Price has probably as quick a step with the dribble as anybody in the country. Profit. The three-pointer. LaRon's first bucket coming off that great performance against the Seminoles that you mentioned, Billy, when he pumped up 22 Monday night. Well, he is one of the stars of the ACC's future. There's no question about it. Price for three. You've got to ask the question. How does Ricky Price get wide open jump shots against any defense? Spin by Profit, tried to get it to Keezy, and it's out of bounds to do. We have a timeout on the floor with 15.04 left in the opening half. We will be back after this message from Bud Light. Coliseum. And our first game of the day, matching Duke and Maryland. Ricky Price off to a hot start. Billy, a couple of three-pointers for eight points. And you think if you had anybody on that scouting report that you say, don't let this guy get an open look, it'd be Ricky Price. Well, sometimes maybe you call a timeout and go over and introduce all your players. There's another open jump shot. This time, Profit's able to get the rebound. Profit pushes it up. He can rebound. Kid can slash. One of the things Maryland's been able to do is get the ball down inside to Booth. And now with Lucas in the game against his zone. Both his fires. And Newton claims it. Really think they ought to try to pump inside the zone a little bit. They've got to get Newton occupied, potentially get Newton in some foul trouble. Duke doing a good job so far. Price has taken over half of Duke's shots, seven of the team's 13. Here, Mike Krzyzewski wanting to use a little of the clock. Capel and Price down inside, coming off the screen. This one blocked. Keith Booth got a piece of that one. Perfect timing by Booth on that shot. Wasn't it something? Just what you pointed out before, Bob. He said, I'll take a big guy. Now watch it right here. Perfect timing. Gets the block on Newton. And the foul on the rebound. Brunson here is the outlet man. Brunson will be used primarily as a screener. You won't see him occupying the ball a lot. Simpkins was coming over for a double down, but got there too late. Good job by Newton to recognize the double team coming and gets a shot off beforehand. Dangerous pass in the lane. Maryland fortunate. You had a situation where Booth was actually fading away from the guy that was making the penetration, Simpkins. That would have worked if he'd been coming to the ball. Profit. Young man's Back not bashful, is he? Wow. Reminiscent of that Monday game. Now Gary Williams is going to get this guy some more playing time the rest of the stretch and on into the NCAA tournament if they're fortunate to get there. He has that kind of ability. Newton lost it. And Rhodes. Simpkins nearly lost it. Here's Booth picking it up. Smart play by Booth. Just catching the ball, holding it. He realized that the break had been lost by the miscue. Court pass. And Johnny Rose missing the three. A tip by Booth, and Newton's got it. There's Price open. Ricky goes in, and that's a charge. Terrific play by Simpkins defensively. He didn't go for any of the shake and bake. They're going to call that basket good. Before, in other words, the release before the contact. No. I don't agree. No, no. I don't agree at all. That charge. I agree. The contact takes place right there. The shots later. The basket should not have counted. So give Price two personals and ten points. Duke switches over to man to man. Well, Stokes has come in for Maryland. Another one of their prize freshmen. 
see how what happened in the baseline there. Well, I don't stepped right past. <laughs> he just keep back. Booth kept backing up. 17-16. The Terrapins have now turned it over four times. Tough shot by Capel. Pretty good defense on him. Mario Lucas with his favorite shot. An excellent shooter. Lucas, although he comes off the bench, puts up the second most shots in his ball club. You know, we've talked about some of these Maryland players as individuals with the talents they bring. It's like Gary's job has been all year to get this unit to click with some depth and, and consistency. Well, they've got plenty of depth. I mean, they go they go almost nine deep with quality ball players. And Domzowski over the back. His second. And they have them at, uh, they they really don't have, obviously losing a Joe Smith, they don't have a guy in the center they can count on for a lot of scoring. But you know, with Akizi and Lucas, it's a pretty nice uh, twosome there in the middle. Top out of the floor in Greensboro, we will return after this message from Continental. The Duke 17 and Maryland 16, 11.49. Our time remaining here in the first half. Bob Rathman, Billy Packer, Paul Cameron will rejoin us at halftime. Interesting note, Billy, about the team fouls. Duke with six, Price and Domzowski two apiece. Maryland with only one foul here in the first part of this game. And they have, a, obviously, a lot more fouls to give. Now, that, that situation for Duke is probably the reason we're going to see them playing much more zone in this ball game. I mean, they can ill afford to have Price sitting on the bench for any minutes at all. Domzowski, as we know, has had uh, foul trouble all year long. Eight disqualifications. Mike Krzyzewski just had nowhere to go on that bench. Dodd Singleton, the walk-on from Queenstown, Maryland, has now come into the Duke lineup. We're talking uh, a great program of the 80s and 90s in a situation where primarily playing with three soccer players in practice. I mean, you know, that's hard to believe, but the reduction to 13 scholarships has affected even the high and the mighty. Without Collins today, they've got five scholarship basketball players, three soccer guys, and a rest walk on us. Right. Hard to believe. Of course, the loss of Moore in uh, mid-season hurt him. And then the injuries to Carmen Wallace and now to Collins. Gonzalski really not in balance to take that shot. Look at Singleton battle in there. Kept it alive. Yep. A lot of kids came to school this year in September. If you just said, hey, you're going to be playing in the first half of the ACC game, 4-5 <laughs> game against Bailey, I said, oh, yeah, sure I am. Yeah. That's what I told my mom when I left home. Yeah, that's you know? right. Amazing. Watch for me on TV. Exactly. <laughs> Here again, your point. They verbally announce on the PA the, uh, the time remaining. And, you hear that 10 second call, Billy, and I think the teams then get a little anxious. Oh, certainly. It's a, it's quite an adjustment not being able to see that light right up in front of your face get down to underneath the 10 second mark. And Booth on the drive, and that's going to be a charge. Second foul on Keith Booth. Yeah, not to mention Trajan Lang. Yeah, you know what? We, we, we all actually, about him. Exactly. There you're talking about a potential all-conference performer we just have totally forgotten about. And I'm sure that Duke has it. A very unfortunate thing for that young man who's uh, destined for stardom if he can get his health back. Again, Maryland with the pressure. Duke solving it over the top again. What Ricky Price has got to be careful of is that penetration move. He can pick up another charging foul. And that's uh, one of the best things he does is penetrate to the basket. And just under 10 minutes to go in this first half. Look at Duke now changing the way they're playing this game completely. Trying to now play half court at a time. Price with 13 here in the first half. And Price with a steal. Number three. Trying to make it a leave it perhaps for Newton. No, a bad play. Akizi picks it up and lays it in. Well, Stokes trying to make the sensational play there. You get a three-on-one break, take it right down to the basket. I realize Profit's got a tremendous leaping ability, but as tight as this score is, you can't try for the sensation. All you're trying to do is advance to the next round here. Three Maryland substitutes lined up at the scorer's table. Waiting to get back in, Simpkins, Hip, and 
Also, Rodney Elliott. You see what Duke is doing now. They're trying to occupy about 10 seconds before they even start to attack the basket. And Maryland able to knock it free from Domzowski for Duke turnovers. 19-18. The Blue Devils lead. Was Rhodes, I think, with a push. Maybe a, an illegal screen. It was off the ball. Illegal screen on the baseline, trying to get profit free. Now Maryland is able to get its subsidies. Now the other thing that's happening, we'll see the illegal screen right there by Rhodes hits Price. The other thing that we're seeing here, Bob, is the fact that with Maryland not scoring and getting to that foul line, they're not able to set up their press. Now, if they were able to score, they could force this into a little bit more of a full court game and try to wear Duke down in that regard, too. But when you don't score, you don't have that chance. You see the Maryland turnover story. They have eight here in the first half. Capel. That's a two. This first bucket of the game. Now, there, Akizi got caught up not paying attention to who's the potential scorer and worrying too much about his man. Hip shovels to Akizi. Lovina again blocked by Newton. And Newton now blocks another one and draws a foul. Boy, is a big fellow active. And I think, too, Billy, for the Duke resurgence, Newton's had a big part of that. Oh, without question. Newton has, uh, has really been terrific on the inside for Duke. And you got to figure... Greg knows that he has got to play, you know, 35 minutes a game in the big game. So uh, much like Tim Duncan from Wake Forest, a guy that knows that, he, you know, he can't play as aggressively on every possession as he might like to. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vitale presents the Direct TV Dish Out the Winners sweepstakes. The first point for Johnny Rhodes this afternoon, the senior from Dunbar, D.C. See, again, you miss that front end of the foul, you can't get into your press. Rhodes nearly came up with the steal. Back to work. Maryland doing a much better job now recognizing where Price is, not giving him the wide open jump. Cable's floating leaner doesn't go. Now Rhodes inside. Boy, is he tough <laughs> around the bucket. 6-3. Gets it off anyway. And here comes the press. Normally with Price and Keeple, you throw over the top and they'd want to take that jumper down there or Collins, but they just don't want to get into a rush game now. Beautiful pass. And Newton trying to get up between Elliott and Nikizi and a foul is called. Terrific pass by Wojo looking one way, passing right inside. First you see it right here. He's looking to go down the sidelines, freezes the inside defenders on that look. And Newton gets a chance to go right out of the line. Wojo gets a breather, and one of the uh, soccer players that you mentioned, Billy, Jay Heaps, number 22, has checked into the Blue Devil lineup. He was the national freshman of the year in collegiate soccer, and here he is in the ACC tournament. Well, he expected to be in the ACC tournament, but in the other sport, <laughs> kicking the ball instead hey, of... Uh, he's already been to one final. There you go. <laughs> A timeout on the floor in Greensboro. Ricky Price with a dozen, and Duke leads it by two. Back after this from Bud Light. 23-21, the Duke lead over the Maryland Terrapins. The shot clock problems continue here in Greensboro, so it will be a voice call from the PA. Need the team, Billy, shooting well. Maryland 7 of 19 for 37%. Duke at 38% on 9 out of 24. Price has been uh, perhaps the brightest spot offensively in this game for either team. You know, one of the things when you look back at their win, of course, 77-75 uh, over Maryland, that's hard to believe when you take in consideration the personnel out here. Elliott into the ball game now, so uh, Gary Williams really going deep on his bench. Elliott, an excellent defender, good rebounder. Easy, fumbles it. The Duke defensive pressure forces a hell ball, and the arrow will give Duke the basketball. Easy having a lot of problems on the offensive end of the court so far today. Really hadn't gotten untracked. Ojahowski back in for Duke. 
the press really hasn't been a factor in regard to turnovers, but it can wear down a team with a short bench. Well, you're so right, Bill. It has a cumulative effect. Off Dom Zalski out of bounds to Maryland. The interesting note, though, statistically about Maryland, for all of the turnovers they create, the turnovers that they give away kind of negates their great defensive prowess. They average 17 turnovers a game, and they create 20. There's Elliott. Good job by Brunson. Well, well, of first. course, last year at this time, Mike Krzyzewski did not bring his ball club to the A ACC tournament in what was a disastrous year for Duke. They played in the play-in game and were able to get, be successful there against NC State, but then lost out uh, to Wake thereafter. He watched it at the beach, <laughs> did Mike Krzyzewski last year. Actually, Duke played pretty well in the ACC tournament last year. They gave Wake all they could handle in that, uh, particularly in the first half of that game. Oh, well, Duke jumped off to that huge lead. Yeah. Wake came back. As Capel got hit on the arm, no call. And it's out of bounds to Duke. They're getting all the bounces. Moran Profit, Terrell Stokes now back in. Rhodes and Hip go out. And there you see the walking wounded in the suits over there for Duke lined up right in the row, Langdon and Collins. Carmen Wallace. All that Duke is trying to do now is to occupy some clock, keep it down within 10 before they get the shot. Profit strikes, too quick. And we've got a foul. Coming up on Stan Brunson. It will be his second. Pretty good job by Profit on Price that time, realizing he was isolated out on the wing. There is Collins. You just don't make up for points like that because he's taken a lot of big shots. Matter of fact, sometimes criticized for taking the big shot at the end of the game. You'll ever forget the one he hit against NC State to really get them in any semblance of a year whatsoever. I mean, that could have made them 0-5 in the league to start off with, probably never to recover. And what could it have done to NC State? Instead of losing all those close games, maybe to have the confidence, their season could have turned around. And yeah, they could have won that game twice if Collins doesn't hit the shot, and then, right. of course, if Marshall's drive at the end doesn't go in. Since Collins, as Price fires a three, since Collins hit that gamer at NC State, Billy Duke has gone nine and five, and four of the losses by a combined 10 points. Of course, one of the big wins for Duke is that victory over UCLA by that margin will help everybody in this league. And a blocking foul coming up, and this one will be on Wojo. How'd you like that move by Profit? Spin move against a smaller man. That's tough to do. Nine team fouls now against the Blue Devils. To the free throw line, Laron Profit. Laron's mom married an Air Force officer, so he really has seen the world. He's lived in Charleston, South Carolina, Panama, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Dover, Delaware. Dover's where he played his high school basketball. So he's already been around. And he'll see more of the world if his Maryland ball club can make the NCAA. I really like him as a ball player. He's going to be a good one. And here's Stokes. Nearly came up with it here from behind. Simpkins with the poke away. Great hustle by Dwayne Simpkins on that play. Price should have been more aware. They've got two point guards in the ball game now, does Maryland. Playing against this uh, defense by Duke. Around Domzowski, Booth runs into Newton, couldn't get it to go, and taming the rebound. Size of factor for Booth on that one. He just you know, tried to create a shot with his left hand because Newton was a little bit too big for him. We are tied at 23. Again, you can see the pace that Duke wants to play in this game. They're really getting it to work their way. They don't want an 85 or 90 point game. They like to play down to six. Shot clock under five as Capel misses the three. And there was a, a, an effect of the announcer. He, could, he, you know, he heard down to six. And 
This one goes for Profit. He's got 11, three threes. The other thing I like about Profit is he plays like he's a star. I mean, you know, it, it, it's not like he has any hesitancy at ever, in any way about his game. We're talking about a guy that just hasn't played that many minutes to have that attitude. Newton, another fadeaway does it go and boot the rebound. Up to Stokes. Now, if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you're starting to get real concerned now. Where are the points going to come from? Simpkins got hit on the arm. Way short with the shot. Duke is able to escape, at least for this time. Newton way out top. Obviously, they don't want to attack this early. Not a scorer on the inside, so primarily this is just a perimeter game out here. Elliott. That's not his game. Another rebound for Domzowski. His third today. And now Duke will take a 20-second timeout. So the Blue Devils have fallen behind by three, and Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk things over. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the 1996 Olympics, presents this Olympic salute to excellence question. What U.S. women gymnasts hold the most Olympic medals? We'll have the answer a little later. Different twist of the regular season as we come to Greensboro this year for the first time since 1990 that neither Duke nor North Carolina did not share first place. Georgia Tech winning the regular year by one full game over Wake Forest. The Blue Devils are seated fourth. North Carolina, which plays the final game against Clemson tonight at 9.30, seated number three. Well, Mike Krzyzewski. Well, that's what we were pointing out, right. Bob. But where are these points going to come from? You, you know, now the pressure is really on Price and Capel because without Collins in the game, you just don't have the guys to take the big shots. Robin with a steal, gets it back. Oh, Elliott the follow. Oh, good. That's Elliott's range right there. Following up. Junk baskets. Duke in serious problems here. And that time, Duke did not do a good job in bounding the ball. Cable takes it to the bucket, scored, and a blocking foul on Booth, and that's his third. Interesting situation here. That's the one way Duke can score, but if they do that, then they get in a fast-paced game. Now they've got a problem with both stamina, foul trouble, and Maryland with a much deeper bench would love to see the game pick up. So sometimes you press just to force action. And Capel and Price can both finish off there, but they don't want to in this game because Mike doesn't want to turn it into a fast-paced game. Maryland must go the final 240 to half without Keith Booth. And now Jeff Cable looks for his fifth point. You know, you have to go all the way back with Gary Williams and Mike Krzyzewski to the NCAA tournament back in 1985. Was Gary beat Mike when he was at BC at that time. Of course, Michael Adams during that period of time. Johnny Dawkins the year before Duke went to the Final Four. That's a long time ago. Elliott. Up and in. So Rodney with four. Maryland's able to set up the press. Newton gets it into Matt Christensen. And you can see they don't want Matt handling that ball much against that press. Why she gets it back in a hurry. Wojo. The runner is good. He hurt his ankle. Oh, you're not going to believe this for Duke. This is unbelievable. Wojo let it fly, and when he came down, he landed on one of the turps. Mike Krzyzewski walks out the floor and has to wonder, when is this going to cease? We're talking about a tough kid here. But he went in the air and had no place to go. <laughs> the injured the guys can't Blue Devils. He just cannot believe it. And we'll see if we can take another look when we come back. Time out with two of three left in the half. Back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. ACC Basketball is brought to you in part by CarQuest Auto Parts. Steve 
Wojciechowski has been taken to the Duke locker room, helped off by his teammates. Billy, here's the end of the play. You see him going up in the air. Now, your defenseless at this point came right down on the ankle. Who is that? Uh, Lucas. Yeah, Lucas's ankle stepped on his foot. And you can see the pain that he's in. Here he comes. Right there. Oh, oh man. man. What a he twist. Roll that. What a twist. Oh, boy. It is absolutely amazing how things fall and you know for certain teams and you maybe can go years without having a serious injury to a ball club and then all of a sudden there's Chris Collins just shaking his head he can't believe it. And now you've get now you start talking about a bench that's been outscored 15 to nothing in this ball game. We knew Maryland would have an advantage, but to this degree, it's really hard to overcome. And now Duke's bench becomes their starters primarily. Heaps and Christensen in right now for the Blue Devils. Good and Newton here the three to travel. So Duke forces a turnover. That's a good pass by Prophet Elliott wasn't ready to put it away. A minute 43 remaining in the first half. The Maryland lead stands at only three. A little half court trap right now, realizing you've got a bunch of rookies on the floor. And Prophet takes it away from Capel. Simpkins will shoot two. Ricky Price, and that'll be his third. Price is third. Prophet showing again. He's got the total game. Beautiful steal against a veteran backcourt man. All that Lane could do is just get that ball actively up on the board. It sets up a situation with the best free throw shooter in the league where they should be able to hit these and get into their press. Now you're talking about what are you going to do against the press? If you're going to use Capel on the press now with Price with three fouls, you have no finishers. you got to bring Capel down to be a guy to bring it up the court. Todd Singleton now has come in. Yeah, this could get to be an event. And surprisingly, Maryland doesn't go full court. They go into a half-court trap. left in the opening half. Stokes with a poke away, but gets called for the foul. Not a good job by Stokes. He has to be thinking about something. Hey, I'm playing against a guy that came off the soccer team. Play him solid. Don't try to play him cute. There he comes from behind, gets a piece. Now you put a guy on the foul line, one and one. You want Duke to have to execute with guys on the floor now that really haven't played a lot of basketball. Never mind, Jay, he could use his hands. <laughs> his first collegiate free throws. And they're an experience. I don't think Maryland is doing a good job taking advantage of what should be a dominant situation when they're playing, in my estimation, very tentatively against a team they should try to put away. Singleton the rebound. Duke down five, under a minute to play in the hand. Cable, big three. Matt Christensen, the offensive rebound. Back up, no. Tim good by Newton. Duke within three, Stokes outside Lucas. Newton flying at him and he drains it. Lucas, one of the best shooting big guys, you know, in the country. He's just unconscious out there. He had 17 in the game at Duke. Biggest lead today for the Terps. Now, you know, Eves is not going to look to shoot the ball. Capel out here. Four seconds left in the half. Be a charge on Jeff Cable. Maryland will have 2.2 seconds left. Now let's see. They've got they've got a situation here. Lucas from the corner. They don't have time to penetrate length of court here. You got Lucas from the corner with a jumper. Profit with a jumper. Duke picks up two thirds of the court, so they don't want to let anything go long. Profit from mid court, way wide, and the first half is history. Gary Williams, head 
drives to the locker room with a six-point lead in his pocket, 35-29 over the Blue Devils. Box. The auxiliary 35s, and they'll put those in the corner, but that's a little different look, too. You know, Bob, I, I really think that that's a disadvantage to have them down there because, first of all, it's an angle, if you're the guy with the ball in your hands, that you really don't want to be looking at. You know, you want it, your, your eyes need to be focused in a different direction than that. And if you're a guy who doesn't have the ball in his hands with your back to the basket, you're never going to see it anyway. So I don't know what effect they have at all. And Wojo taped up, ready to go to start the second half. Boy, the way he twisted that thing, I didn't think we'd see him well, this afternoon. I always feel, and I know this is an old wives' tale, I get this from my father, when you twist an ankle, keep running on it right away. The minute that you let it uh, sit there and, and, and freeze up on you, you just never get it going. So I think it's a great sign here that he's going to be out and try to push on it. But he is really and severely handicapped in the yep. He's 50 percent, right? He's 50 percent. All the more reason for Maryland to go right out and force him to put it on the floor and work hard. I mean, that's not bad sportsmanship there. Here comes the heat, too. Yep. This is how Gary Williams likes to play. You see, Wojo not even quick enough to cut. But Maryland puts it on and takes it off. Terps lead by eight. Dobzowski now barrels in. Able to work the smaller man boot. Now, here's Dwayne Simpkins. Put the ball on the floor and penetrate right by Wojo. Force him to play. Johnny Rhodes. Missing. Don't, don't like what Maryland's doing at all. I mean, you got a guy that cannot move on his feet. You got a ball handler that's an excellent ball handler. Just take him to the top of the key. Go by him. Make the game simple. So now it turns to a set. Just move everybody to the baseline. Yeah, just, just eat him up. You know, I mean, uh, the game doesn't have to be brain surgery. There's a drive and a charge. And, and who did he charge into? Wojo, who's standing there. Wait, that's the one thing he can do. Hey, Wojo's standing right motionless. Trap on the inbounds pass. And here again, they're not forcing Wojo to have to do anything with those feet. Now Booth overplays on the wing and is able to knock it out of bounds. Some people may feel that, you know, I'm getting on somebody's case when you say, well, you know, that's not fair, but that's, you know, that's what sport's about. You have to take advantage of weaknesses within the framework of the rules. Maryland leading by six. And the other thing, Bob, that's going to be important here in this case is that Duke cannot afford to get behind by too big a margin. I mean, they don't have the points off the bench that they can make a big comeback. So they've got to keep this game close the best they can. And a good way to do it. Greg Newton with eight. 37-33 Maryland. Capel matching up with Rhodes down in hot inside. Doing a good job beating him to the spot. As his price on him. Rhodes in and out with the three. Johnny can't get anything to drop today. First half, he was one for four. Misses the two to start off the second half. 37-33, Dobzowski back out to Wojo. He'll take the three and miss it. Just a little long. Hip running. Now Simpkins with the push up. Nice pull up by Dwayne. He tried to go into the basket. He gets that one blocked. Price open. it again. Terrific hustle. They know they're undermanned to the Duke kids, and one of the things you got to give them credit for, they battle back, battle back all year against this kind of adversity. Booth fades and hits.
gets it. Against the one-two-two zone. Gets inside it. Five points for Keith. 41-35. Simpkins picking out higher and higher on Wojo each time down the court. Stan Brunson at the table waiting to check in for the Blue Devils. Price for three. Yes. Well, that was kind of like what buried Duke, I mean, buried Maryland up at Maryland. Almost from the same spot. Had a man in the, with the hands in his face there. Ricky with 15. That's his third three. The keys in. Wojo got a hand to break that play up. And steal. Wow. And a technical foul has been called on the Maryland bench. Well, I don't know if it, if it was on the Maryland nope. bench or on Akeese. It is on Akeese. Yeah. You're right. I'm trying to read Rick Hartzell's eyes as he walked to the scorer's yep. table. Here's the steal. The Keezy talked back to the official right there on the spot. That was an excellent steal by Wojo. Give that young man a lot of credit. Jeff Keep performance. Excuse me, Bill. Jeff Cable will shoot the technicals. His fifth point. So Kesey with his second personal goes to the bench. Kind of interesting, a young man with not a lot of basketball experience. Uh, and just letting his emotion get away with him there. A young man from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. This is a one-point game, folks. 16-26 left. And Capel quickly to Dombrowski. Can you believe this? Duke leads by 42-41. Johnny Rhodes inside. A lot of this has to do with the coach gets kids to believe in themselves. You know, this Duke team could have fallen apart as they did last year. And if you had to boil Mike Krzyzewski's philosophy down to one thing, the post pass goes astray. His army training leader of men yep you get him prepared for battle not too many do it as well as that man duke with a one point lead on that bucket right now they're down a point in greensburg state is the first champion of the new conference nothing quite like it the acc tournament Billy, you've not only played, coach, broadcast this event for so many years, and you know, here we go again. And this Greensboro facility has really been kind to Duke here the last few years. The Blue Devils have won 17 of their last 21 tournament games in the Greensboro Coliseum. Of course, 92, Christian Leitner, the year that Duke uh, really did it all. They won the regular season, then they came in and just absolutely destroyed North Carolina in the final that year, 97. 74-74 went on to win the national championship back to back that's their last championship win Johnny Gray pointing that it's Maryland ball nice piece of officiating there he had the perfect angle on it and that ball hit the uh, or did it did it hit anybody or just it went it away I wonder if it was touched by Capel and then went back out of bounds. Do you see Packet back inside? Yep. Nice turn move that time. It has got six. With the scoring, Wojo is really now being affected, but with that ankle. I mean, he can hardly turn on that thing. When he sat down, it certainly affected him. So now, yeah. Ka now Capel has got to be the primary ball handler, and Mike Krzyzewski just trying to get some minutes out of Wojo. Great crossover. And Price draws the foul. What this is doing, though, for Ricky Price, as far as his career is concerned and his time at Duke, I think he, it's starting to elevate him mentally into a star position. I think he accepted, started out very well, you remember, as a freshman, and then hurt his ankle, and then really lost a lot of confidence in his freshman year. Of course, went through last season in a situation where uh, the whole team went down confidence-wise. But I, I think now he's starting to understand that he is a star player. 
And now that it's all on his shoulders through the score in the game like this, he's just got to take over. It'll be good for him. Keith Booth is out of there for the time being with four personals and 15.03 remaining. Three threes for Ricky Price in this game. Two point lead. And with that bench scoring, Laurent Prophet, who had that good first half, is not in the ball game yet after almost uh, six minutes here in the second half. Get to Johnny Rhodes. Reach over the shoulder. Didn't beat the man to the spot defensively. Rhodes tough to guard because he likes to be down inside and at six foot four knows what to do with it when he gets it. Hip for three. Now Duke has a chance to tie with a two. Take the lead with a three. Wojciechowski, can, he, he can hardly move on that ankle, except straight ahead. The minute he has to make any kind of a, a change of directions, he's in trouble. Newton just rips it out of there, keeps it alive. My goodness. Well, the big man from Canada really taking over. You know, Mike Krzyzewski, as we all know, has had some great, great teams. And uh, those teams had a lot of heart, too. A lot of guys that were spirited players. But I'll bet you he loves what this team's doing today as much as any of those guys because they are battling as hard as you can against very severe odds. Capel draws a contact, missed the shot. Lucas the rebound. Maryland holding a two-point lead. See, that's what, that's what Simpkins could do. Just blow right by Mojo and then make an easier play. Profit is at the table, ready to check in. Cable's three, missed it. And Lucas rebounds. This is the tempo Maryland wants to get going. And that's a three-point miss, so three free throws coming up for Simpkins. And that's like three in, just like him hitting a jump shot, 87% free throw shooter. But the pace that Simpkins set the last two times down the floor, just forcing fast breaks, is the route for Maryland to go. Newton goes out. And Stan Brunson is back in now for Duke as Simpkins steps up to the line. Young man missed three games with suspension at the end of the year. And really, when you look at it, Maryland kind of dodged the bullet a little bit during that period of time particularly with that big win at the end of the year against Florida State, because that game could have gone either way. The Terrapin, there's a rare miss with Wayne at the line. The Terps went two and one in the, the time that Simpkins was gone on the suspension had that impressive win over Missouri at home. Wayne's able to make two out of three. He's got nine points this afternoon, 47-43. Cable avoids Simpkins and turns it into a three-on-one. Dobzowski with a stop. Boy, it really is a good news, bad news situation for Duke. When <laughs> they have an opportunity to run. Well, they've got it. You know, there's just not going to be many places they're going to get points. So they've got to take advantage of some of them. And there you have Simpkins again. Dobzowski with another big play. And Wojo just couldn't go get the ball. Yep. See, Simpkins is now understanding what he's got to do. Just put the ball on the floor, drive right on by him. Good fast break. Duke takes advantage of it. Domzowski with a nice catch. That ball was thrown down below his waist. There's Wojo as you can see. He just cannot get there. Domzowski with a nice block. Almost had one of those Timmy Duncan block and retrieve plays. So changes for the Devils as Newton comes in, heaps, replaces Wojo, who limps to the bench. Inside off the window for Mario Lucas. The press stays on. Price throws it way back to Newton. He was almost at midcourt. <laughs> You've got Newton and heaps are going to bring that ball up against the press. Capel, nice spin move and banks it in. It's really one of Capel and McGinnis probably do that as well as any two guys in the ACC. McGinnis really has that move down as well. Puts his back to you from the push off by Profit. 
Thought he got away with it. Iran's first. 49-47 ball game. Now Terrell Stokes coming in, and Simpkins will stay in the ball game. You look around the country at some of these other tournaments. Uh, big loss yesterday for Virginia Tech. Might have had a little effect on their seeding potential in the uh, NCAA tournament. The Big East going right where is expected. Those four power teams ending up in their semifinals, which should be something. You think that will cost Tech a top four seed? Oh, yeah. I sure do. Inside, Newton. Nice. Boy, use that, use that shoulder very nicely. Tie ball game, 12-10 left. You have to figure any Alyssa and Newton have to be the two most improved players of magnitude in the league. Wouldn't you agree with that? No Bob? question, Bill. Here we see the zone now by Duke, just packing things in, giving up the jump shot. Nice touch for Lucas. Memphis product. There's another uh, conference with Memphis, Louisville, Cincinnati, and Marquette all making it to their semifinals. Terrific conference, USA. And a terrific effort from the Blue Devils. They're trailing by two. All right, Nations Bank, Olympic salute to excellence question. What U.S. women gymnasts hold the most Olympic medals? And the answer is Mary Lou and Shannon Miller. 11.50 remaining. Uh, the passions run deep here. As we gather for the 43rd ACC tournament. 51-49 is our score, Maryland by two. And that wasn't uh, with the Clemson fan ID on there. That was an NC State fan, huh? North Carolina Clemson meet tonight. That's the final game of the quarterfinal round. Wake and Virginia at seven. We'll have NC State Georgia Tech coming up immediately after this game. I'm sure some of the Carolina faithful will say, you're just lucky you got past the first game. <laughs> How would it feel like to play more than one game in this tournament? Price. And it drops the tie. Sixth tie of this first game. I really think Maryland making a big mistake in this game. Not trying to knock out Duke University by just throwing it up and turn this into a just wild basketball game. It's helter skelter, yeah. pell bell up and down. Now Duke can take the lead, and Wojo's back out there. Boy, it's amazing this kid's back out there, considering the fact that, you know, you, you run a little bit, get it loose, then have to sit down on the bench. We saw him limping before. It seems to be getting progressively worse. I think so, too. Now Mike uh, did a smart thing, taking him away from the ball. You have a hard time elevating to shoot a jump shot. Here he is. Now to profit goes baseline. Talk about end to end quickness. Can't keep him on the bench. Cannot keep him on the bench. He just is. He's just playing too well right now. 53-51 Maryland. And look, nobody guarding. Now this is amazing. Here's Mojo who cannot move, not being having anybody within 10 feet of. Situation as they run here, three on two. Look at Prop going to work. Blocked off by Wojo. In a situation where the jury is out concerning their NCAA future. I mean, they really need this game. Yep. Here comes Prophet. Baseline. Uses the rim. Goes up underneath. Bench going now 24 to 0. I mean, uh, and, and 24 to 0 bench going in two point differential in the game. Is that amazing? It is. And even playing a 2 3 zone, Rojo not capable of guarding the dribbler, and yet the dribbler very passively handling the ball on the outside. Lucas for two. Big game for Lucas. He's got nine. Four point Maryland lead. Matter of fact, I think pretty soon the bench will have outscored the starters for, for Maryland. And then here again, look at nobody guarding Wojak. In the Dobbs house. Lost the handle. 
Did Profit touch it last? And the ball will belong to Duke. Twenty-one seconds on the shot clock. The one you see there darkened inoperative. They're going with those smaller clocks in the corner of court, obscured from our view at this end of the floor. There is the shot clock at the other end. Newton. And taken away by Stokes. Here comes Barron. Stokes to Plotka. And he's fouled. Plotka made the block. This kid's got a lot of courage. You can see the steal. He hustles back. You'll probably see him in the picture right here. He just hustling as best he can. And then goes over and tries to make a block on that bad leg. MVP for courage. Oh, there's no play. He may have already wrapped it up for the tournament. How about this? This is his fourth foul. He can't walk far enough to commit one. I mean, <laughs> terrific job. Got a... oh, by Elliott. Oh, big play. 58-51. It's so tough now because Price and people have to come back to help out on the. He gets the ball up. They have no shot. Is Maryland playing a triangle of two? Here's Wojo outside. Long tip for Price. Good. You're asking me the defense. It's hard to tell. You know, there's no nobody is cutting through, so you can't really see if a man's following or not. Luke is good. Boy, he's got the stroke going today. 11 for Mario, six point Maryland lead. Let's take a look. We've got the uh, three standing on the inside. It looks like Capel and, and uh, Price are being played man to man. So it's a triangle and two. Oh, yeah, that way. Stokes and Profit have the two. And a, a nice move by Gary Williams in that respect because. You know, there are only two guys really going to score on this uh, in this offense. 60-54. Eight and a half to play. Rojo whips it out to Dobzowski. Well, you can see that zone packed in. Johnny Rhodes playing the point of the triangle. Seconds on the shot clock. Cable dipped out. Here's Newton. Cable ends up with it. We're on the floor. On the and floor. a foul on Johnny Rhodes. Well, that's one of the things in the triangle, too. It is a pretty tough, difficult defense to rebound in. So Duke has been active here, keeping the ball alive. Good hands by Newton. Good effort on his part. Really try to go up. And there's Capel just standing inside and then batted back to him. A 1-1 for Jeff Capel. Ojo out. I'm sure just briefly. Well, every time he goes out, though, and has to sit, that thing will tighten up more. So every time he's come back in, he's had even less motion. Despite the fact that he's got the four persons, he won't be on the bench long. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has to stay in this game as long as possible and just hope maybe something could turn. So we can't hold him out here and say, well, gee, we'll try to win in the last three minutes. Ah. Keeps it alive. Playing right over the top of uh, Lucas. Profit with a steal. The fake, the drive, ah. short. Elliott out of bounds to do. Terrific layup by Profit. Time out in Greensboro, 7.53 remaining. We'll be back after this message from Bud Light. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Toyota. Bob Rathman, Billy Packer, Paul Cameron with you as we kick off the ACC tournament. The man from Cabot Creek, West Virginia, Jerry West, surveys the future. One of the great players, obviously, of all time, Mr. Clutch. He's one of those guys that uh, I, I feel basketball changes about every 10 years in terms of the quality of the athlete and what they can do, and so consequently what coaches can do with them. 
West is one of those guys like Oscar Robertson, who is was his counterpart to great guards uh, in the 60s. One of those guys that could transcend that, you know, play in a different era. Very few can make that move, but he certainly was one of them. And has turned out to be a great administrator in basketball as well. I mean, building those late for powerhouses. Fifteen to shoot. Defense still in that triangle and two. Price. Probably a bad shot normally, but not in this game because Duke has only got two guys that can put it up right now. 7-15 remaining. The Maryland lead stands at five. Duke back in the 2-3 zone. Lucas has given it some trouble when he touches that ball inside. The Maryland bench now at a point in the game where they have indeed outscored the starters. That's up 31 to 29. Stokes trying to get it inside, gets it back. The kick out to Profit. A three. I said you can't keep him on the bench. 17 for Laurent. He, he is playing with such confidence. I mean, he, he is playing like, hey, I'm the star in this ball club. And I'm not talking about in a, in a way of trying to get uh, a lot of credit for it. I mean, he just looks like he knows what he's doing out there. Now Wojo tries to get up and come off the bench to come in the game and really limping badly. And if Duke were to advance in this ball game, it'd be hard to believe he could play tomorrow. 6.33, the time remaining. The last Maryland foul went against Terrell Stokes, his second. You know, this reminds me a little bit of Georgia Tech two years ago. Remember with the way they finished up the year with everybody being injured, uh, right. you know, really not being able to put a club on the floor. They did not get the NCAA tournament bid primarily because of that when the NIT lost the opening round against Siena. Right. Reminds me an awful lot of this Duke team. So hopefully, even if they were to get bounced out here today that they could get their walk and wounded back at least Collins and Rojo. A lane violation against Merrill. So Cable is able to hit this one. 63-56. And they're in a man-to-man -man Stokes. Still just gives it up. Easily doesn't make Rojo play. There's the scoring story for the Turks. Elliott up and off. Tip won't go. Long out to Ojo. He, he tracks that rebound down, hopping along on one foot. Newton going to work. Solid performance by Newton today. I mean, he just took that ball right at Elliott. And now Maryland is going to take a timeout. And it's a 20-second timeout. 63-58 Maryland. Time now for our smart play of the year, and it comes from the North Carolina-Maryland game from the first conference weekend of the season. As you recall, the score was tied in overtime, and under five seconds left. The mad scramble under the bucket. Dante is able to throw it up, and Anton Jamison puts it home and just beat the buzzer as the Tar Heels won it 88 286. Former Iba winner as the nation's top defender, Tommy Amaker. Over there with Quinn Snyder. Man that uh, both men have been to the Final Four. But with all the uh, injured guards, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> put those guys in. <laughs> set of guards. Stokes underneath, and Rhodes puts it in. There was the Derek Wittenberg in the imitation right there. Stokes puts it up. Short, straight for the lob. 65-58. Picking up a little higher now, but look at, again, Rhodes way off Wojo. Tough playing now without that shot clock, isn't it? You can tell it. Cape was just uh, kind of looking. Yeah, trying to find it. Yep. Shot came with about six on the clock on that last Duke possession. 65-58. A really a big possession here. Maryland in a situation can really stretch, stretch this out. Duke having all problems scoring. Elliott smothered by Duke. Nice 
Krzyzewski realizing it too. He wants a timeout for his ball club. He's just trying to milk this thing down and stay in as long as possible. Les Robinson, his Wolfpack taking on Georgia Tech in the second quarterfinal game of the afternoon. That's coming up next. But this one still with 4.58 remaining and a seven-point lead for the Terrapins. but also is coached in this event. We'll see Les Robinson and Bobby Crummins go head-to-head -head in the next game. Bobby Crimmins' uh, last game, I'll never forget that, uh, when he played for South Carolina. They went through the, the conference that year, 14-0, won the championship, were rated at one point that season, number one in the nation, and they went down to play NC State. John Roche got hurt in the semifinal game, hurt his ankle, not as bad as Will goes, but kind of close. Frank McGuire opt to have John play in the championship game. NC State came out there under Norm Sloan. Terrific job. Double overtime. They knocked off South Carolina in the days when you went nowhere if you didn't win at all. And uh, Bobby Crimmins uh, often talks about where he just kind of went on a hiatus. They couldn't find him for weeks at a time after that. Certainly has made a great comeback now. And they know where he can find him now. Maryland really starting to put some distance between That's all. himself and the doubles. That's his fifth. So Wojo is gone, and I would certainly hope that these 23,000 plus here at Greensburg give this kid an ovation as he goes off the floor. One of the guttiest performances we've seen in this tournament in a long time. Well, he tried to make two plays against the fast break. That one he picked up a foul on it. He needs to go right to that locker room now and gets that, that thing down, ice down. No sense sitting on that bench. Mike Krzyzewski showing his love for him. He fouls out with five points, five assists, and four rebounds. But he really should go right to the locker room now, get that thing, and they need to be thinking about next Thursday or Friday, depending on where they... Uh, get assigned the, the doctor talking to him right now and he probably wants to sit on that bench with his teammates but it'd be wise to take him to the locker room 68 58 Maryland Stokes shooting that uh, off to the side foul shot of his been doing that since high school wanted to go to North Carolina play with Rashid his high school teammate Gary Williams very grateful that that was not the case. And this one is a foul coming up on Jay Heaps. Good hustle by Elliott. Showing his quickness for a man his size. Friends, for the latest information on the ACC tournament, check out our address on the internet. Call now and get up to the minute scores and statistics, as well as a look at official ACC tournament merchandise. The ACC tournament on the World Wide Web. Of course, you think back with Maryland in a nice position now to advance. Back in 84, where they had Lenny Bias, he was the MVP in one of the great tournament performances, individual performances. They beat this Duke team, 74-62 to win that championship. Well, Elliott reaches double figures for just the third time this season. Never forget Lefty Grizel. Remember he yeah. said he was going to put that trophy yeah. on, on the bumper <laughs> of his car and ride all over the state of North Carolina. <laughs> Lucas the rebound. Lucas a solid performance today. Threw that one away. Domzowski bangs it home. I mean, you can't fault Duke today. They're not going to win this ball game, but you can't fault them for the way that they've played so under man. Some people may say, hey, there's four minutes to go. Anything can happen, and they can, but you just don't get the feeling they have the points to come back in a game like this. Tough luck for Elliott. Heaps to Domzowski. Hey! Two great plays by Domzowski. And how about Heaps pushing that ball up the floor? And we've got a timeout with 3.39 left. rookie team member right there. Time out on the floor call, but the Devils will return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. 
Cleveland 71-62. An impressive dunk for Domzowski, but he may have to get his nose fixed. <laughs> oh, boy, that one came right back down in the kisser, didn't it? <laughs> Ouch. He's another another battle scar today. Well, he's coming on really well as this year yeah. progressed. I mean, I think that uh, Duke has to be very happy with what they'll have uh, an outstanding power forward in their lineup for years to come. Keeps picking up full court. We want to challenge a guy that's an outstanding soccer player back there. You know, he can move his feet. Good solid feet. hit something inside the booth and a foul on Ricky Price that will be his fourth uh, Price picked up three in the first half and really hasn't uh, had anything close to a foul until that one and I don't know why that far away from the basket he didn't need to push on profit the announcers for this game selected and compensated by Ray Com and Jefferson Pilot Sports and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited Solid 75% free throw shooter on the year is Profit. And a solid student as well, Billy. 3.25 in that first semester. Well over 1,000 on the SATs. Just chewing that gum, a freshman. Not feeling any pressure whatsoever of the ACC tournament. It's a very solid ball game. The 22 Monday against the Seminoles, 19 today against the Dukes. But don't you get the feeling that, that he's, I mean, that's not uh, an aberration. I mean, right. something looks like he can do any day you put him out there. You give him the minutes. Heaps bids for the midcourt steal. Stokes should not challenge this guy who's moving his feet out there. Give the ball up. Let somebody else do it. 73-64. Heaps has got great quickness. He's really beating himself over the screen. And he's not going to be able to do it on the offensive end of the floor. Jake with the foul. And you have to be careful, too, that you don't wrap those arms around the offensive player. Because that could be construed as an intentional foul. Well, he was going for the right. Come on. But boy, you're getting a little testy here in this game. <laughs> 250 to go. You've only got four more to work today. <laughs> And here, as I pointed out about Stokes before, he does not square up perpendicular to the basket. He sits off on an angle here, about two-thirds of the way across the lane. Whatever it takes. Exactly. If you feel that that's what you're comfortable with. Gonzowski was in the lane a little early. Shot goes anyway. 44-0 to zero was the bench scoring today. I pointed out at the top of the show that I thought that would be a difference, but I never projected 44 points. And actually, as we both talked about, the bench has actually outscored the starters for now. Now Dwayne Simpkins will check in. The Maryland bench feeling that the ball should be theirs. Profit goes out. Heaps will take the three and hit it. How about that? Time out, dude. Oh, how about that? You know, I think Mike loves these guys. Look at, look at Collins. He's so happy for him. His first collegiate field goal comes in the ACC tournament. He got it to eight points. They had a 20-second timeout. Duke takes a 20. Cross-court pass, and you know, there was no question in his mind he was going to take that shot. Let's look at our MVPs for the ball game. LaRon Profit with his impressive day. Jeff Capel for Duke. Food Line will make a $1,000 donation on their behalf to the ACC's Operation Outreach Fund, which benefits deserving middle schools throughout the ACC region. You know, Bob, you pointed out Heaps was picked as the number one freshman soccer player in America. You know, athletes like that, when, when they bring a courage to the floor. I mean, this may not be his primary sport, but if you're good enough to be the best soccer player in the country as a, as a freshman soccer player, I mean, you are going to be a competitive athlete, and he's showing it out here. Like I said before, if I'm Stokes, I get rid of that ball, and, and don't challenge this kid's competitiveness. 
shot clock at five. Lucas and air ball, so Duke's going to get it. The shot clock has expired. Duke what? basketball. No, it's, yep, was a shot clock violation because uh, didn't come within about two feet of that rim. So now Duke down eight and a minute 56 to play. Lucas never had that ball in his hand. I mean, he, he got it. He released it, but it really wasn't poised the way his normal jump shot is. Heaps. Heaps for trouble. <laughs> yeah. And Rhodes with the foul. Now he better not do any mouthing after the foul there. It's going to be a one and one, and uh, you get a quick technical. Remember, Rikizi got the quick technical in this uh, ball game today. I think uh, that the players would be well served to zip it up this weekend after all that's been talked about with the sportsmanship going down the stretch of the conference play. We certainly agree. You see Rhodes sitting down now. Gary putting his two point guards out there on the floor. Well, he's had a problem on his foul in the first half. This is the front end. Lucas rebounds. comes to double. A minute 30 remaining. Maryland never did show to us, Bob, that they had even uh, with this lead. Simpkins with the miss. Newton clears to Price. They certainly had superior depth and talent here today. But they never could put Duke away. Capel. Stokes the rebound. You get a chance to get heaps of the line on that miss to really make things interesting. Darrell Stokes will go to the line. 52.8, the time remaining. And the best free throw shooter on the club on the line. It has to make you feel good. Looking on, uh, just missed out. He and Jameson for that fifth spot, ACC first team. Jameson got the spot by a few votes. One vote. One vote. Yep, Johnny Rhodes goes to second team. Gary Williams somewhat upset about that. But he certainly deserved to be there. Set an all-time record for steals in the league, 100 steals this year. And I think, too, it's uh, Johnny's last go-around. Dombowski stuffs it. Duke will call the timeout. 45.8 remaining. Seven-point game. So the Blue Devils, unless uh, they have a few miracles here, it's a three-possession game, 45.8. Duke running out of timeouts as well, but it looks like Maryland is going to advance, although it wasn't easy today for the Terrapins. Duke put up a brave fight. Georgia Tech and NC State will be coming up next. The Yellow Jackets, the top seed in the tournament, won a school record 13 conference games. What will be interesting there is going to be the situation of Georgia Tech and NC State, a team that played last night. Sometimes that can affect you on a negative basis from a standpoint of, of, of stamina. You know, you just play last night, you emotional high to say, hey, we advanced, particularly NC State. Not one guy on their team had been part of a winning game in the ACC tournament prior to last night. Right. On the other hand, you have a club that, that really hasn't played yet, been off for a while in Georgia Tech. Maybe they can't get the most started. So it'll be interesting to see early on in that ball game. Does State have the carryover? Does Georgia Tech have to get themselves uh, motivated? And you wonder, too, about an NC State team that has been so close and been denied victory during the regular year to finally come through with that breakthrough win, to jump off to a 19-0 lead last night and win a ball game. You know, what effect is that going to have? What you're talking about? You know, Bob, I, I think just like we saw in this ball game right here, the Maryland players, and I'm talking about the psyche of, of playing in a, in a tournament, particularly against guys that are familiar with each other, 
the, the psyche for Maryland should have been the knockout blow today. They never did show that. The psyche for Georgia Tech should be, hey, we're number one. You guys are lucky to be here. You're out of here. You know, and you got to do it early because the longer you allow a team to stay in a ball game like that, the more trouble you've got. Then you start questioning yourself. Dave Odom had an interesting point, I think, yesterday. As you look at what has happened to, with the seeds over the years, the championships. Yesterday, of course, really turns into a gab fest <laughs> at the shooter round. I thought Dave had an interesting point. He said, when you come to a tournament, you got to have a cause. you got to have something to play for. Wake had that last year, embodied in Randolph yep. Children's. Yep. Which team will find the cause and take it to Sunday and, afternoon this year? And, and in fairness to the kids of, of what I'll call the modern day, now that multiple teams go into the tournament, you know, you really have to dig down deep, you know, as an example of Georgia Tech. You know you're going to be in the NCAA tournament. The pride of saying I want to be the champion of my league has got to be something you have to work on in your head. And you I know. thought that's what Randolph had last year. Oh, no question about it. He wanted to prove he was the best guy in the league, going to put the team on his back and carry him there, and uh, and did it in a fashion that we had never seen before. The tournament record for points scored for Childress is the Deeks won it. 78-69. Got to get it up quick. Gonzalski lost concentration there. Mike Krzyzewski gives him a little hand slap, saying that's all right. Nice pass. He just, you notice that? He was looking down as he released the ball. He really looked Catches. At Boom. How do you miss one of those? Dwayne Simpkins to the foul line. Of course, Maryland will face the winner of our next game in that bracket. And you talk about the way this ACC has gone this year. Here's Georgia Tech at NC State coming up. The first place team against what was the last place team in the regular season. And two barn burners <laughs> in overtime in Atlanta. And a pretty close game in Raleigh. Good job by Simpkins to realize the clock is the opponent here for, for Duke University. Don't need any more points. Jeff Capel is now fouled out of the game. And Mike Krzyzewski is going to get the rest of the guys in. Jeremy Hall and Baker Perry. Well, there's the ice for Wojo. He did not have to go back to the locker room. They just brought it to him on the bench. Well, he probably wanted to be out there and watch these guys all the way but it is smart move get that ice on that thing for a while Jeff Capel to the team from the field that's incredible well it is incredible oh, what happened here oh, Dwayne Simpkins has gone down in front of us JJ Bush the team trainer is out there that just got faint I, he didn't get hit by anybody that I saw Sir, yeah. Think back to Marcus Canby earlier in the year. I just wonder just what has happened here. Dwayne is uh, looks to be alert. Maybe just a, a dizzy spell. It is great now to see, however, that nobody takes any of these things lightly. The rules have been changed. When a man, a player is down, he's injured, as long as it takes for him to get himself uh, back up. So with 20 seconds to go, they lift Simpkins to his feet. He's a little shaky. be escorted to the Maryland bench. It's been a bizarre afternoon. It really has. 80 to 69 is our score with Maryland leading. Keith Booth to the free throw line to shoot two. 
been able to win this game without a big offensive day from Keith. Or for Johnny Rhodes for that matter. Right. Either Ooh. double figures. Or Simpkins. But Profit has been the man as he was in the uh, regular season finale. So we'll be tracking this, this story throughout the day as I know you'll be glued to the set watching all the ACC games today. And when we get the updates on Dwayne during our next game, later on in the evening, we'll pass them along. How will that affect tomorrow? 82-69. Here we have a freshman and four walk-ons on the floor right now for Duke University to wrap this up. Heaps is going to throw it up and off. And the horn sounds ending the ball game. Maryland advances into tomorrow's semifinal. As Gary Williams and Mike Krzyzewski shake hands in midcourt. Maryland 82 and Duke 69, the final score. We will be back after this message from Bud Light. 